All right, everyone. I'm back with more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, episode number five, Rise from the Ashes. It's the final day of the trial. We're in the latter portion of the trial, even. Uh, I believe there's two more parts to this, and then we're done. So let's just jump right into this. February 25th, 12.06 p.m., I guess. District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hmm. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Hmm. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait. Detective Gumshoe. What is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, pal, this is the last time. Here, she asked me to give you this if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law. Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. I is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Evidence law securely slipped into pocket. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. Well, let's see. Thumb through it here. Oh. What a thorough book here. We got uh, rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. And rule two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Uh, very, uh, very complicated book we got here. Wait, what's on the cover? Is that like a, like a marshmallow peep with a, with a Sherlock Holmes hat? I believe it is. Anyway. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all the allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't yet begun. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Skye found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now, you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. No matter the cost. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. February 25th, 12.52 p.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. Rubble, 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 clack. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for that news, Your Honor. Yes, well, <clears throat> normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness, but, um, <clears throat> uh, this isn't uh, easy for me to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have um, uh, struck a bargain. 
You think I may have manipulated the witness? I, I, I didn't say that. It's just, uh, you see, everyone has been talking and, uh, hmm. Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. Uh, a solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? what, what? But there, there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the uh, with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well, the defense accepts the, pres uh, the prosecution's proposal. Clack. Then it's settled. This uh, defense may now... Call forth the next witness? Mr. Wright? You do realize this is your last chance, right? If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Mike Meekins. No, it's obviously David Gant. Take that. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? Oh, as the defense, as the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the court in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Okay. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. Hmm. <laughs> so, you want to play hardball, eh? Uh, please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto. What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered the prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear my... Oh my God, start over. Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Like the role you played in all of this, Neil says, uh, reciting it with the proper uh, gusto. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Clack. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. The SL9 Incident As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up, 
That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Hmm. He was lying on the floor unconscious. Ooh. Slish. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. Okay, here we go. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. Questioning who? What kind of testimony is this? As I recall, a ceremony was held that day at the police department. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up, too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run, made him run away like that. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help either. Hold it. So the two of you ran immediately after him? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say he got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden. The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably is not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went into his heart though. That's not funny. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls, Lana and Emma. Oh, Phoenix. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back on it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. <clears throat> Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. Hold it. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk? That's right. I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Hold it. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence is inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do any good, Mr. Wright. Hmm. If you're going to stare at anything, You'd better start staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Ah, it's, give, it's giving me a huge hint of what I should be doing here. Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gant to the incident. As I recalled, oh, this was back at the beginning. Okay, we gotta go to really now. Okay, let's see what we got. 
It's gotta be letter evidence. Uh, no. Well, yeah, but we're not supposed. I remember that we're not supposed to present this yet. So, oh, but we do have this, and he did have a fragment of it in his in his safe. Objection! You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several piece of, pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal in investigation. Rubble, 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 rubble. Fuck. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Huh. Here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me, uh, me? Why would I have any, what would I, why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of Forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do it too. Isn't that right, righto? Objection. However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, He'll end up paying to work. Isn't he already fired? Quack. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Evidence and forgery. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when these pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well... You know. All right, Udgy. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? Uh, what are these guys? Telepathic? And what are they talking about? All right, cross-examination. For all I know, you could have planted the evidence in my... Hold it! I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped... Oh, M Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Rito's prints are found. 
Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Ugh, never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Anyway, you can't prove when those uh, pieces of evidence were discovered. Hold it. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. Objection. If concealing evidence found at the crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not through speaking yet, right -o. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Hold it. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. The fact that it wasn't uh, that it wasn't itemized in the initial investigation and it only showed up in your safe is really suspicious, sir. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient, says Phoenix. Uh, right. The chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, right -o. Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. How can you look at me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember, who was it that murdered Neil? Hmm? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Hmm. Well, now do you see? <laughs> Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hold it. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all of this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would be, of course, uh, the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of the SL-9 incident secured your promotion to chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? Well, what do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of the SL-9 incident merely sped up the, inve the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Gah. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motive for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There. It's out in the open now. I'm a narcissist. Aji, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? Uh, by all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Hmm. Nothing in it for... for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You've got another thing coming. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime, and tough on people, that's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's a good one, Worthy. 
Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Of course. True, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Clack. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Mike Beacons. No, um, here we go. Lana Sky. Take that. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. The defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What, what do you mean? After the SL9 incident was, was resolved, Lana Skye was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job, this change rather, this job change, was you, Chief Gant. But, but uh, how could he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that d despite the Chief's formidable, formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Oh, wait. That was a metaphor. You must mean puppet as in someone uh, forced to... <laughs> Admit it, Chief. I didn't even get to finish reading that. While the judge is uh, thinking that over, uh, you assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive... To a, your motive to appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Right-o, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this that I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this is all this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Or which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Were they? You'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. Whoa, 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 what? Rubble, 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 rubble. Clack, 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 clack. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This. This is an affront to the highest ranking office in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and, and murder. That's uh, impossible. Rubble, 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 rubble. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. <laughs> it's too late, Mr. Wright. There is no turning back for us now. 
it looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Clack. Uh, can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it had better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Uh... Not that. Do I even have anything? I don't. Yeah, it's gotta be. Cross your fingers. Take that. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 777-7777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. Oh, what? Uh, how do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit number. Uh, seven digits? You don't mean... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? That, that's the... That's the, the combination on my luggage. No, 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 no. I'm afraid... I'm afraid, Your Honor. The code was 777-7777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief... Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Rubble, 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 rubble. Quack. Order, order! Chief Gant, wh what do you have to say? Uh, nothing. The defense's search of my office was, a, was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you. About the use of this ID card. <sighs> Clack. Chief Gant, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? <sighs> what about it? I'm chief of police, whether it's, whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me. When you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. Objection. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief Gant, I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. Fuck. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. Objection. No, it isn't, Your Honor. It isn't? This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? Crack. In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to the went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Uh oh 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 oh, oh this. Take that. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. 
So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh! Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Rubble, 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 rubble. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Hmm? Exactly. But wait! The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Objection! Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! Rubble, rubble, rubble. Clack, 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 clack. Chief, Gant, you, you didn't. The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To just. To dispose of detect. Uh, oh my god, start over. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. Objection! You're forgetting, Mr. Wright, that the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor's office's parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hmm? Hey, you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant. You left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, chief can't use this. I don't know. Let's go backwards. Oh! 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 The screwdriver! Yes! Take that! This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? He moved the body with a screwdriver? <laughs> but what does it have to do with the case? Uh, Judge, idiot, uh, the screwdriver is just uh, a means to get... Uh, here, let me explain. Uh, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbing, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... 
I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Rubble, 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 rubble. Quack. Detective Goodman's body was carried at the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car? Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would, why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? And a weak one at that, the red-white case. Actually, is that from, is that from the red-white uh, case? I thought it was. And then I thought maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. Huh. <laughs> There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. Rubble, 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 rubble. Clack, 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 clack. Order, order, order! What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal for uh, the, the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was... This was a not a... That's a typo! I've, I found a typo in Phoenix Wright. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed into the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It was a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe your time's up. My, my, my time's up? Sorry, Righto, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. Objection. But, but, but the, the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right. Right now. <laughs> well, well, this, is, this is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Objection. So you're going to just run away after all of this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you were saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. <laughs> well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get over, get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current uh, chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, y y your honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky uh, dispose of his body. Do I have any concrete proof? Uh, do I? Um... Can't show that. Yeah, because that's actually the concrete proof that we're looking for. Um, but we can't show it yet. Well, I know there's another part to this, so I'm going to guess no, just this once, because uh, I know this one, this case in particular throws you a couple loops, where like you're always supposed to say yes I have the evidence, and yes I should always press, and blah blah blah, this is one case where uh, you don't always do that. No use showing evidence, I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. <laughs> See, uh, G? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegation allegations against the Chief. What? what? 
Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, right-ho. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. <laughs> okay, Aji, I'll leave the rest to you. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This, this is an affront to a senior officer in our, in our nation's law enforcement agency. Oh, shit. Oh, oh good. Edgeworth to the rescue. Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There is one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. <laughs> Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Clack. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth. But we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth. It's one of these two. Um, guessing Lana? Take that. The defendant? Miss Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has no objection, Your Honor. Clack. Very well, the court will now take its final recess for the day. In 50 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. Uh, this co hold hold on. Huh? Chief Gant, I, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. <laughs> That's right. Your sister will be found guilty of Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, this isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alrighty then. I've got a lunch date to meet. Bastard. <laughs> Judge is nonplussed. Uh, oh, okay. Um, if there aren't any further objections... Uh, this court will now... This court is now in recess. February 25th, 2.04 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. Are defense attorneys and prosecutors allowed to cavort like this? Anyway, that chief... He's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. I was fired. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, don't worry. I'm already I've already decided where to work now. At your office. Oh my, my office? Sure. I'll take the place of a I'll take the place of that top knotted girl you used to work with. Could he mean Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm. Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief, uh, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks? What do you mean by that? It's simple. 
if the chief refuses to testify. The opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything, too? Ah, Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to you, I was in the, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the, it was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah, now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean to follow Chief Gant's orders? She must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait... No. I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. To be continued. All right. We'll be moving on to the final act of Rise from the Ashes. After I have a little break. So uh, don't you go nowhere. I shall return.